Kate's hair. Oh, I like, like your hair. Dang yesterday? It. I was going to say it first. I noticed. I was like, oh, Bella changed your hair. Yeah, I just today, the, yeah, I just today in the morning was able to get in really early. I like it's it. Kind of purple, pink, or? Yeah, it's okay. purple. <laughs> okay. Um, so where are we at? I'm afraid to ask. What do you guys need help with? I I need help with what we were, oh, I guess we went there. Yesterday, when, after the movie, Bella and Laura kind of went through like, the deep slowly thing and how to do that. And I thought I knew how to do it, but then something happened with my gate and it's not working. So okay. now I don't, I can't get into the gate in order to do it. Okay, so I missed the part you the part of what Git is broken, but what were you trying to do in Git? Oh, I was just trying to put the like clone it into there. Okay, like so, that branch. So, did you want to share your screen and we can maybe help walk you through it or? Because I think I figured out though thing with Zoom as far as like, I don't have to go like give people permission to share screens. Okay. So mm -hmm. I tried to open mm -hmm. and I pulled up the screen and it says, do you want to run this file? So then I like ran the file and after I click yes on a bunch of things, it like, took me to this. Oh, do you want to allow this application? And then it gives me all these things, which I say yes. It like installs it, even though I already have it. Yes, it's an update, um, which you don't really need to do this, but they're trying to be nice and keep you up to date. <laughs> Okay. Like finish and takes me to this. Yeah, who cares about the release notes? You can close this. Okay. So then I just reopen this and it gives me the same thing again. Okay. Um, interesting. Well, the reason it is because that's just the update. That's just the installer program. That's not actual the actual Git program. Mm. That's just the that's just the installer program. You. That's why it's giving you that. So you're basically installing and install. You just keep installing it all the time. So you can hit cancel. It's installed. So you should be able to open like the WPI lib or whatever. And well, I was just thinking, how smart am I? I was up till four o'clock this morning working on doing a, my version of the ball handle, ball collector, by the way, so. Speaking of that, um, I was able to get it uh, cloned to WPI limit into my own. What's that? Oh, looks like fun. So Larry's <laughs> at the shop and uh, my camera's not focusing on it, but he's like, wow, that light is really, he has the limelight plugged in and it turned on. And he's like, wow, that light is really bright. Yeah. And it like flashes too. It's like, ah! people go into epileptic seizures or something, huh? possibly. So what was that, Bella? Um, for when we're doing the, Ball collector, since you said you wanted both the ejector and the lifter to be in the same subgroup, same how sub would you put that in? How would you put that into the sub same subgroup? 
So would well, you like keep, keep it like by their own? Would you like me to show you guys the, what what I have done? So yes, please. What what I have done? We if if we got really desperate, we could actually merge this to the ball collector and. Um, then we could use it. But I don't want to do that. Um, um, Laura helped, helped me, like showed me the um, uh, Git, uh, GitLab for the old version for how to model it for when going into the um, WPI lib. I wasn't sure how to do it. So you guys see my, um, my VS Code stuff? OK. So basically, what I, I just took that empty class. And I put in, uh, there's a motor that moves it. I just called it move motor. I couldn't think of a better name because this is the motor that moves it up and down. And it's run by a spark, right? So it's a type spark. And there's an intake motor, right? It runs the, the intake thingy. And I called it intake motor. I believe that's also a spark, correct, Bella? Yeah. And then we have a um, couple limit switches. Um, and then I put this other thing in because as I was doing this, I figured something else out. But um, basically, we have two limit switches. We have an upper limit switch and a lower limit switch. They're on digital inputs. Right? I have constants for where all these things are connected to the robo reel. Um, <clears throat> there isn't really anything to do in the, the ball collector or in the constructor. So because I did the new cool kid way of the, um, the cool kid way of initializing these things. Um, so there isn't anything really to do in the constructor. Um, the periodic function, that's, don't worry about that right now. Um, and then I started writing some, some basic methods for this class. And one is uh, raise and wait for the switch and lower and wait for the switch. Um, so, and then there's this wait for switch function, which um, how you tell it to, to wait is a little interesting, um, but basically it's gonna wait 10 milliseconds and it's gonna just wait, it's gonna check the switch um, and so the reason, I, oh, and the reason I'm doing this destination switch, um, it's for kind of for efficiency, but you could, you could put, you could put this like loop inside the raise for a switch and have it sit and wait for the raise, the upper switch or, and same with the lower switch, right? Cause you're going to wait till it's the lower switch or wait till it's the upper switch. I just have this, um, well, I, I guess things are a little out of order because I, I was kind of doing things a little, um, a little out of, a little out of, as, you, as I write code, sometimes things kind of come to me and, um, so I wrote raise and lower, which is basically, uh, I, I set where I'm, I set the destination switch to where I'm going. So I'm going to go to the upper switch. And then, so I just assign the upper switch object to the destination switch. And I start the, the move motor moving in the appropriate direction at the appropriate speed. Same with the lower thing, the lower switch. Um, so if you notice, notice up here, raise and wait for switch, it calls raise, which starts the motor. And then I just sit and wait for, for it to hit the switch. So this way, I, I this wait for destination switch, it just it doesn't care which switch it is because it, it's the switch it cares about is assigned to this this member variable. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's just going to sit there and it's going to check to see if the switch is closed. If it's not then it's going to it's going to sleep for 10 seconds and it's just going to sit and go through this loop until it's closed and then when the switch closes it exits out of this and it's done um oh i just realized there is a bug in this do you know what the bug is um 
if you look at these three, if you look at these three functions, there is a bug in it. What do we want to do when we get to the destination switch? You want to um, stop it. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's that's true. Right. So. Um, yeah, it equals true. True yeah. should equal. So um, when it pops out of this loop, you can just do move motor dot set speed. Zero dot zero, which tells it to stop. The reason the reason I didn't think about doing it here is because when I go to do the commands, because we're not really going to use this stuff. This is going to just be more for testing. But when, when we go to do the commands, um, the the checking of the switch is is done in a different spot. It's it'll actually call this function and setting the motors to zero is done inside the command versus um, uh, here. Um, I could, well, yeah, I, when we get to the command, we may, as you do, as you write code, you'll, as you implement other things, you'll go, oh, I kind of did that wrong or I need to change this, which is fine. Um, cause it's, I don't, we, it's hard to anticipate everything all at once. Um, so yeah, I haven't really thought about the command a whole lot yet. Um, when we go to implement the command, um, cause basically I put in a, um, we might put in a, um, You could put in a basically a method to stop it too, which we might want, uh, okay. like void. Um, you could call it stop, move, motor, um, because we don't want people to actually use the actual motor itself directly. We have a method in here so we can control what people are doing. So you would just do like move motor. Uh, why is it not? Set speed. Zero, zero. Right. So we so we have a method so people could stop the move motor if they wanted. So in the command, there's there's going to be a a place in the command where it checks to see if it's done, and so when it which is basically. Um, the scheduler calls this this function inside a command called is finished. So the command would then call this at limit switch to see if it's done. And if this returns true, then the scheduler calls another function called end, which that function needs to be able to stop the motor. So having a, a public function to stop the, mo the motor is probably a good thing. So. Does that all make sense? Yes, and I actually have um, one question now that I'm looking through this. Um, when would you want it public and when would you want it private? Really quick. So public is when you want the world to be able to see it, to use it. So if, if so like if I made this private, right? And I went over here and let's say, I'm just gonna use this as an example, right? Um, let's see, what can I do here? I can, I'm trying, I can add, um, so where do I have, uh, oh, arcade drive will work, I think. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So here I have a drivetrain and I have, so I could, I'm just playing around here. Um, so I could create a private thing called um, and we're going to call up, it's going to be a type ball collector, right? Uh, my ball collector. Uh, so say like down here and this is finished, 
say this was my a ball collector command. I would have is finish call like ball collector or my ball collector. Dot add limit switch, right? So this is the is finished function I was talking about. So as the command's running, there's a scheduler that's going to call this to see if it's done. So, uh, and then when it is done, you can see like for the arcade drive, I set it to zero um, if, if, it, if the end function gets called. So I could then do my ball collector dot stop. But um, so as I do stop, right? So or I do the dot, you can see these are all the public things that I can call from outside the ball collector object. So these are these are all the public things. And you'll notice stop move motor is not in here. Why? Because Got it. so when you when you say uh, public, it, you can use that phrase you for can use other. It, yeah, you can use Got it outside. It. Okay. You can use it outside the object. So as soon as I change this to public. And I save it and I go back over here. Um, now, when I do now, stop move motor shows up and I can call it from outside the object. Got it. Okay. So, so you tend to keep, you tend to keep member variables private and member, member thingies private because if I made like drive this drivetrain public. You are, you are uh, using drivetrain outside of yes, the... Yes, anybody who instantiated this command could then start invoking stuff directly on the drivetrain, which you don't necessarily want people to do because they go, oh, I can use this it, Well, you can do it. It can lead to people misusing things and, do, and causing some really painful things. Got it. So uh, if you're going to use like stop move, stop motor I might use just outside of bulk collector so I would make that public yes. however drivetrain because I'm not I'm not going to use that outside of the drivetrain right subsystem so I keep that private yes so okay. like so this is this is this is a commit this arcade drive this is a command that uses the drivetrain so I don't want somebody to go well I could get to the drivetrain if directly by um, instant creating this arcade drive command, and then I can just use the drivetrain. It's like, no, that, that's not the way it's intended to be done. <laughs> um, and it just, it, it, it leads to people trying to hack things. Hacking meaning not trying to break into things, but hacking is like, I'm just trying to find a way to make it work. And it's not the, the best design. Um, because you want to keep things sort of like encapsulated yeah. um, so that the, the object acts as an object. Um, making everything public is sort of a, it's sort of a cheaty way in, in making things work. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I just was curious. <laughs> it, it's no problem. When I, when I lived, did programming in high school, which was a long time ago, uh, I actually did take programming classes my soft my junior and senior years in high school and I had a hard time grasping the concept of function parameters which Laura will probably laugh at this because everybody understands function parameters so what was my solution this was before objects and all this other stuff I made everything global meaning you could access anything from anywhere it makes life really easy, but is that the right way to do it? No, <laughs> because who know, you might have somebody come along and, and go, well, gee, I'm gonna use it. Oh, they have this global variable and, and this is like, then everything just gets all messy. Um, so, but keeping things private, most, most cases things are gonna be private. There is another little qualifier here that we, 
you, they probably haven't covered in the CS Awesome course, and they haven't, and I know I haven't covered it. It's called Protected. Um, protected is an um, interesting one. We probably won't ever use it. Um, it's, it's useful in that. If you have, say, I have a command that I have an object that inherits from this this object, right? Um, protected allows the the child object to be able to access and use the members with inside the parent class. Because um, if you make things private just because a class inherit you inherit from a class, you you don't get to see the private things in the parent class. But if you make them protected, then, then the, the child classes can see it. But don't worry about protected. It's, we won't really use it. We use private and public for the most part. Um, make sense? OK. So, uh, so where do you guys need help in getting Getting going. Uh, we got Kayla and Olivia's problem probably fixed. What, what's up? What's your question? I I so, um, I did the in Git. I did the Git clone, and then I put in my address. And says the project you were looking for cannot be found. Please make okay. sure you have the correct access rights, and the repository exists. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing and we'll see what you're actually doing here. So you can share your screen and then we'll get you cloned. Uh, oh, you misspelled recharge. How oh, is that something? I feel ashamed. You have recharge with the, it ends in with a W. Oh. That's and so what, what you can do is you can press the up arrow key. Yes. That'll just go to the last command that you entered. And then you can use the left arrow key to yeah. just tab over and then remove the W. Oops. Yes. Oops, you got an extra T. There you go. OK, there we go. Thank you. So now you should be able to open that folder and Yes, code in WP Island. And then, um, so I'm curious. So Wade did just show us this branch that he has that he put his like ball collector code into. Um, that's in this year's project. It was written really late at night, so yeah. <laughs> I haven't tested that's, it out. So that's okay. But um, I'm curious if anyone would remember the command or be able to guess what it would be if you wanted to on your local machine within the project be able to go to that branch. I don't know because I use the UI. Isn't it a git <laughs> checkout? A git checkout space the two dashes and then whatever your um whatever the branch is called. Yes, something like that. Yeah, yeah, good good memory. Yeah, pretty much it was the two dashes and then track and then the space origin slash whatever the branch is called. Um, but okay. good, good memory though. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I can share, um, I can share it in the chat of this window too. Um, and then it might be helpful if you have like a notepad or like some file on your computer that you want to just store different um, commands and notes. Um, so this is like would be specifically Wade's ball collector branch, but you could change it. Um, Or if you want to do it the really cheeky way, 
It's Laura. Do I? Yes, <laughs> yeah, Laura can Look, yell at me. It's um, it's track just, space origin, right? Yeah. Or if you do the really cheesy way, you can click on the branch down here in the lower left hand corner, and it will pop up a little thing, and you can pick which branch you want to change to. And then, uh, yes, Bella, I think I, I heard you asking if it was like a track space origin. So it is a space. Um, yeah. And then I, I entered in the chat of the Zoom also. Um, like two little things. And I'm looking, there's another, I think is feature ball collector without the weight at the end, just the- um... It's the plain ball collector. Okay, it's, it's is that kind of like where experience. last week mostly, like with just the subsystem initiated? It's just the stuff, yes. Okay. That's what I started with last night. It was supposed to, I don't know, I, I might delete my branch again because I was uh, looking at, uh, stop sharing. Oops, stop. Um, I want to share uh, screen two. Um, yes, today is not ball handler day. Um, not the merge request. We'll talk about the merge request here in a second, a little bit, I think. Um, so if I go repository and I go to graph, I was looking at the graph, which this is kind of cool. Um, if I look at, I deleted it and redid it again this morning and I still don't know if I branched off the right branch. I was expecting, this is my little branch up here. I was expecting it to branch off of this guy here. Somehow it looks like it's branching off of the master branch, which I don't know why. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, so I, maybe I did my branch wrong. I was using the UI, so I, who knows? Um, <laughs> All um, good. One thing I did set up on the driver station. Um, so there is now a new user in our GitLab project called like driver station. So, uh, so you can see the, um, if you go to branches and you go to bulk collector, uh, you'll see this this new person actually made a um, <laughs> change. And I, so this way, because the driver station was pretty much um, set up to um, be me. It was using my account. So yeah. if people made changes, it's like I was the one making all the changes, which is it's it's my obsessive compulsiveness that like no that's not right. Um, it's sort of like the branching. I could probably get away from get away with my branch being branched off the master branch, but it's driving me nuts. So I'll go fix it. Um, uh, admitting I, my obsessive compulsiveness is part of fixing the problem. Um, so. Yeah, so I tested it out yesterday. I tested out the, the new account. So if you make changes on <clears throat> driver station, they will they go and go as driver station, CBOC robotics. So that's all set up. And so Larry, I showed Larry how to change branches and stuff on the <clears throat> driver station and how to deploy code. So he could actually re-image the Robo Rio today and he could actually deploy the master branch or the drivetrain branch to the robo reel and check things out. Awesome. So um, did, every, did everybody see the wonderful little, or get an email about a merge request? Yes. Um, four o'clock this morning. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I can explain a little bit about what this is. Laura already knows. Uh, she better because she's done a lot of these. Um, so what a merge request is, is I've been sitting here working in this branch called 
drivetrain, right? I've been doing all my work in this drivetrain branch. So how do we get that code from the drivetrain drive branch to the master branch? And it's called a merge request. Um, the way you, so the way you create a merge request is actually, if I go to merge request, like, you just do new merge request and you pick the branch that you want to, you pick a source, uh, that's the project and you pick your source branch. So like if I wanted to move the, the drive simulation branch to the drivetrain branch, I could do that and it's gonna create me a merge request to merge everything that was in my simulation branch to the drivetrain branch. And you, you hit compare branches and continue and you kind of fill things out. Uh, I'm not gonna actually submit this because I don't wanna actually do it. Um, you can ass assign reviewers, people to review it. So I can add Bella and I can add, and this is basically what I did last night, and Kayla and Laura and um, Mr. Norton, Larry, Ethan, pick people. Um, you can assign it to yourself if you want. Um, since it's not going to the master branch, it doesn't require any approvals. So this is more an informational thing. And then I can submit it and it will send out the mail saying, hey, there's a merge request. Um, and then uh, from here, could you also show the changes um, potentially yes. <clears throat> just on oh. the bottom? Uh, or or on yeah, if you scroll down, there's like that tab that shows changes. Oh, changes, yeah. So yeah. yeah, here it shows all the changes that will go into the merge request. So if you want to review what you're actually merging, so here you can see this is this is all the, the work that I did for the enabling the physics behind the simulation stuff. It wasn't a whole lot, but um, it does some weird wacky stuff. I don't want to necessarily merge it, but it'll just probably sit out there, um, which is fine. Um, but you you could review it and if you want to take a look. It's just kind of like give yourself a warm fuzzy feeling. Yep, I I, I feel good about what I'm when I'm sending for a merge request. Um, don't, you don't, you're not gonna find all the bugs, right? Like I said, I've already spotted a bug in some of the stuff I wrote. Uh, not necessarily, and I actually sort of found an issue with the merge request that um, I submitted last night. So if we go in here, um, this is uh, being merged to master. So I have a rule set up that if it goes if it's being merged to the master branch, it requires at least appro approval from at least one person other than myself. Um, I figured Laura would actually be nice and approve it, but uh, <laughs> either myself or Laura, can, I can't approve my own stuff, but if I really wanted to, I could, I made the um, CBOT driver station, anybody can approve it. So Bella can approve one, Olivia and Kayla can approve, anybody can approve it. Um, and then up here, same sort of thing, you can see the changes and you can make comments. So if you have a question or you want to make a comment about like, why are we doing this? And uh, yeah, I got it, whatever. Um, add a comment now. I don't know what the start review does. So then you can see the comments in the appear in here and um, I can you can reply to the comment. I'll give the typical answer because. And then when, if it's like calling out an issue and once you fix it, you can resolve it, the threat, market is resolved and all this other stuff. So you can go through and you can see all the changes involved in the, in this merge request. Um, I did, the, there was one thing I realized last night as I was doing this. Uh, 
um, and you'll notice now that in the overview, my comments now show up in the overview. So that makes it really nice. Uh, I did, uh, after I did the merge request, I did realize there was one issue. So I made a commit to fix the issue, which was, it was, I was still using the Victor for the drivetrain. So I changed it to Victor SPX. And as Larry pointed out during the meeting yesterday, yes, the dev board uses um, PWM zero and one. So I changed it to something that won't conflict. So, because the robot actually uses zero and one. So, so I just did a normal commit in VS code, like normal, submitted it, pushed it, and then it shows up in the, um, Merge request as that extra commit, as this guy. So once somebody approves it, then this little merge button will be enabled and you can merge it. And then all that code gets merged. Um, and when you do the merge, it will actually give you an option to delete the source branch. I tend not to because I might want to go back and do other work in that branch. But, um, you can also squash the commits down. So it basically squashes it down into one big commit versus all the other little, I don't know. That's personal preference. I prefer to, I guess for this, not squash them. But um, it'll be a little more obvious once you kind of go through one. Um, but it's not overly complicated. But does it make sense? It's basically looking at the changes, seeing if they make sense, see if you spot anything, questions. You can give a thumbs up, um, yay. And then um, if you, um, let's see. So if I was, so I should be over, over here, I should be, I'm actually logged in as the driver station. So if I go to, uh, let's see, 2021 Infinite Recharge at Home, just so you can see what the approval thingy looks like, um, I can go into the merge request. And there's this big blue approve button. So I can approve it. Woohoo, approve. And then uh, since it's assigned to me, uh, let's see here, if I refresh this page, oh, I think it was because I, I, I added the, the driver station wasn't actually part of the rule when I created the merge request, but as soon as like Laura approves it, then I would. Yeah, I'll... Yeah. You can you can refresh and it'll show. But I was hoping we won't merge until the students can have a look over and ask yes. any questions if they have yes. any questions. Yes. That's why I hadn't, but so yeah, so now you see that Laura has approved it and she could actually revoke her approval, which she can if she wants. I don't care. Um, I would not delete the source branch and I would not squash the commits. So I then hit the merge and then it merges. Make sense? This is all the magic. Yeah. And I will just say also that now that we've given approval for any of you that look at this merge request, it won't ask for your approval, but you, you would also have the option to merge. Um, but generally, we would leave it to whoever has created the merge request to actually decide when to, to merge. merge after people have given whatever comments they want to give, um, which it's not a big deal if, if you accidentally click the button and it merges anyways. Um, but it's it's just nice to like keep whoever created the merge request can like kind of be in charge of when they this way it all the comments. This way it breaks, which it most likely won't, but um, if something does come up or there's a conflict or something, 
which there shouldn't be. Um, they get to go fix it. <laughs> so, anyhow, so um, how do you guys feel about doing the ball collector part? I'm pretty good, especially now that, like, Laura, like I said, Laura showed me the um, last year's version, so I can take a look back up, back at it yeah. to see how it's sort of based, and that'll be very helpful. Yeah. So you, you, you can also you can also look at the. I'm not saying not to look at my branch. You can look at my branch and look what I've done in that branch, um, and feel free to ask questions. Why did you do that? Because there. There are some things in, that I did in my little implementation that you, I'm sure, have you puzzled. That if you if you don't understand certain things that I did, um, ask because <laughs> um, I I will point out two things. Um, let's see here, I will point out a couple things that um, most likely will have you guys going what. Yeah. Um, and I'll also agree. Um, yeah, definitely take a look at, at Wade's branch because he put the, you know, time into it, whatever. And I think it's helpful to see like multiple different ways of doing the same thing because you can code one thing multiple different ways, of course. Like there's so many different yes. ways to do it. So. It's like flying airplanes. There's more than one way to fly <laughs> an airplane because um, yeah. there are Thanks. certain practices and stuff. Um, yeah, the, 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 there are. This is probably, as far as like efficiency, this is probably middle of the road, um, but you could do it with other stuff. Other, there's other ways to do it. Um, like you guys might have covered this in the CS Awesome course, this whole try catch thing. Um, because I needed to, how do you, how do you tell it to wait 10 seconds or why, why would I want to actually, why, why do I even need this? Because um, in, in essence, all I'm doing is this, right? I, I'm doing nothing, right? You could do that. And that's totally fine, right? Because what's this do? This whole little while loop, it just, it's, and, you learn this from experience, from trying things out. The reason you don't necessarily want to do this, especially, if, it's okay if you're like writing a, what we call a single threaded program. Basically, everything runs sequentially. Um, things don't do that on the, on, on the robot. Um, there's what we call threads, multiple. The, so it's doing multiple things at once. So if you do this, um, this is going to steal away a whole bunch of time from the, the processor and nothing and other things aren't going to run. So you put in the, the little sleep. Um, I'll basically, I'll show you what happens. What I initially did when I coded this. I'll take this out. Because um, initially I did thread dot sleep. Um, right. And it should give me a bunch of red. Why didn't it give me the red thingies? Ah, oh, there we go. Um, so I get the red squiggly thing. It tells me there's a problem. And if I hover over it, it says unhandled exception. Um, so this 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 function can throw an exception which is basically an error. And I have two options to fix this. So if I do the little thing to bring up what I can do, so I could do the add throws declaration, which basically does it, it tells whoever calls this function that I might throw this exception, um, which is okay. It will fix the, it fixes that problem, but then up here, I get the same sort of problem. So it just sort of, because yeah, it doesn't really fix my problem for me. Um, so the other option, 
uh, not right click, control period. I can surround it with a, what we call a try catch. So what that does, wow, it sort of screwed up the, that's interesting. Okay, that's what it was supposed to do. Um, so, so what try does is it's going to try calling this function. And if it throws an exception, if it throws an error, the catch will catch that error. And all I'm doing is printing those, the error message, essentially. So the, the auto autocomplete stuff is kind of helpful um, in doing. So you don't have to go do it yourself. It's annoying to write try catch blocks, but um, and they kind of put this in here because you should do something. So this way, I just catch the error, I consume it, I do what I want with it. So in the catch block, you could do other things like, well, I need to, if this error happens, I need to do some other stuff. Um, I just print it out just so I know that it happened. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's why there's try catch. That's why there's a sleep. The sleep kind of like tells this part of the, the program to go to sleep for a second, Give, gives other parts of the program time to execute doesn't necessarily consume all the processor time um, doesn't starve the other parts of the robot because otherwise this could just sit and consume all of it. if you didn't put the sleep in it would just <clears throat> sit there and be consumed because um, the reason we do the commands bella may may remember this from previous years or not <coughs> i can't remember but in previous years when we used to do what we call essentially single threaded robot code. Um, the driver would complain about, um, well, when I tell the ball handler to go up, the robot stops. Um, yeah, because what's happening is you're driving it and then you tell it to go up and it's like, oh, I need to tell it to go up. So everything else stops and it says it moves the ball handler up. And when it finishes, okay, then you can drive again. Not ideal. So this way, by doing multi-threading threads, you can start a thread that would move the ball handler while you're still driving. So you can move the ball handler while you can drive around. Not a big deal this year. Would have been last year. So. I will always remember the elevator forever. Yes. So the elevator, the, elevator, well, the elevator was a classic example of that because they would want to tell the elevator to go up or down while they were driving. And they tell it to go up while they were driving. And they're like, it stops. It was, I can't drive while they don't. And then once it gets to the top, then it gets it, it, Yes. And even then, like it wouldn't go up. The robot would just stop. Yes. <laughs> and the elevator wouldn't even go up. If there's a bug, if there's a bug in the elevator code and you tell it to go up, well, it's trying to go up, but it stops the robot. It stops, it doesn't allow you to drive it while it's trying to go up. And if there's a bug, then yeah. <laughs> Another reason for threads and commands. And so <clears throat> I was hoping to get into commands today. Maybe we could do that Tuesday night a little bit. Um, commands are not hard. They're um, I can go over it really quickly, but if you, so if you write the ball handler, if you write something for the ball handler, you can test it out. I can show you how you could test it out really quickly. Um, and it doesn't have to be with command. Um, I will show you where you can put some stuff in to play with the ball handler. Um, so, so you can use the simulation stuff that I showed you last week to test out the, the ball handler. 
uh, or to kind of see if things work. So where's my Zoom thing? Tuesday and Thursday, I can't meet because I have volleyball games. Luckily, you have volleyball this is on Tuesday. So what? When do you want to meet? Any other days works. It's just Tuesday and Thursday that I have volleyball games, and this is the last week. Well, technically okay. next week is. Let's let's meet on Wednesday. Um. So ball collector. So. Because we could meet tomorrow night, but I'm busy tomorrow night, but also that doesn't really give you guys a lot of time to work on anything. So let's meet on Wednesday night. Um, so if I wanted to test out my ball collector, I would go, I can go into robot.java and you see all these little like this robot init and robot periodic, um, disabled init, dis autonomous submit. So you could, I would go with um, either a autonomous init, which is the initialization routine for the autonomous mode, or you could go into teleop init, which is the initialization uh, for the teleop. I would not put stuff in the periodic functions um, the periodic functions get called like every 50 milliseconds. So whatever you put in here in the periodic functions is going to get called over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, you could also do testament, but teleop in it is fine. So you could put stuff, you could, you could create, um, I could create a ball collector my ball collector. And I want to make a new ball collector. And there's nothing to pass to the constructor. So this is really easy. And then I just do my ball collector dot phrase wait for switch. So this would call my raise and wait for switch thing. And then I can, we'll, uh, let's see here. I need to actually stop sharing this. I need to actually, we're gonna try this out real time and see if it actually works. Um, I want to share my entire screen because I was just sharing the window. Um, so I would do my wonderful simulate robot code on desktop. Build, 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 build. Yeah. And this still has my bug in it too, by the way, I think. Doesn't still have my bug. Can we name it? Huh? Let's name the bug. <laughs> Let's name the bug. So there is a way to file stuff in GitLab as far as things to go fix like bugs and stuff. Um, we probably won't do too much of that. Um, For my code, everything will probably need to be fixed. So there's no need. <laughs> well, this is a way you track what, what we've done and, and um, So let's see here. Where are my switches? Robo, Robo, real, I don't care about that. Hardware. Oh. Digital input output. So why? Where's? Why is interesting? I am trying to find just will disable outputs on DSL, PWM outputs. Um, so PWM zero is currently at one um, or a negative one. And one of these is.
so this I think still has my bug in it, uh, which is I didn't stop it. Went to, yeah, I didn't do this because I need to see it never stopped. So I need to tell it to stop because this is still. Uh, you need to remember which port the the um, move motor is. I think it's zero. See, it's still running. So that's I and even though I told it to. Yeah. So while and then move motor dot set speed zero dot zero and do, 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 do. And the one thing too about the simulation, um, I think all the switches default to high, which is closed. So before I test this out, I want to make sure that I set the switches so that they're open. Go away, zoom controls. Oh, I know why. Uh, what problems? That's okay. So, yeah, uh, construct the. There is one little thing about my the way I have this currently coded, which I will show you how to fix. Um, autonomous. And it crashed. It didn't work. <laughs> Resource already allocated. Yeah, I know. So don't construct the don't construct the don't construct the ball collector in the in it. Um, I'll show you where to do it. So this line. So I constructed it and then. I ran, I stopped the autonomous and I ran it again and it came through and it constructed another one. Well, it has things in it that are already being used. So um, that's why it crashed. So take that and just put it up here as like a member variable. Like that. And that will fix a lot of the problems. Okay, now I get my PWMs and I see my switches. I want to set these to low just so that they're open. And then I tell it to go to autonomous. And obviously, I need to do some work here because apparently it is not working the way I anticipated. Uh, let's see, disabled. Oh, okay. High is high is uh, open and low is closed. And oh, low. There, it's this one here. So as soon as this one went low, um, I'll set it back to high. So as soon as I do autonomous, it's trying to move the, it's running the motor to, to raise it. And as soon as I hit, um, change it to low, it stops. Make sense? And then if I wanted, I could uh, 
test it out because it's going to sit here and wait for the raise. I can do my ball collector dot lower wait for switch. So now when I run it, it's going to, I can do a raise and a lower. So uh, simulate. Build, build, build. And take my two extensions. So both my switches are open. I have my two PWMs. I go into autonomous. This one should go to minus one. It does. And I change this to low. And now it's lowering it and it changes it to 0.25 as Larry told me. So now I can, this one actually opened and this is one. So now it's, it's zero. Cool. See, you can test stuff out. You can play with things. <laughs> so that's how you would test out your ball collector. So with that, you're, how are you guys doing? You guys want to try and make an attempt at the ball collector for Wednesday? Yeah. So if you want, you can um, make your own branch off the, the ball collector branch, or you can just use the ball collector branch and have fun, try stuff out, experiment. I would probably go with the create your own branch, but um, so you don't like stomp on each other uh, if you want to push stuff up to GitLab. So. If you want to just work locally, that's fine too. So, um, and if you have problems, you can um, email me. I can hop on Zoom, help you guys out. Uh, my schedule this week is pretty light. Um, Wednesday, I don't have anything. Tomorrow, I don't have anything during the day. And then Monday evening's kind of busy. Tuesday, I have an appointment in the morning. And then Friday, I get to take the puppy dog to the vet. He has an ear infection. He really loves us sticking stuff in his ears. Um, so he gets a recheck on Friday, so Friday morning. So. But if you have questions, email me or Laura, we can help you out. Um, Laura's available probably in the evenings, so. Yeah. Cool. So I'm looking forward to seeing some, some stuff. And then we'll start going probably next week and over commands and, or maybe on Wednesday, we can start going over commands a little bit and um, doing some of the dashboard stuff. Anyhow, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. If not, before. Uh, thank you. bye. Thank you. Sounds good.